G'day. Things are a little bit different today. I was supposed to be in the brewery brewing, but it's torrential rain here in Victoria. Um, as anyone that lives near here would know. And when it rains, this is what happens to my brewery. Oh, garage just flooded. I'm gonna put my shoes on. It doesn't happen every time, but it's one of those things, you don't wanna be in the middle of the brew and it floods. So the brewing days get called off with weather like this and there's not much I can do about it. We're renting and you know, that's just how it is. So today what I thought I'd do is come inside and just answer some of the most common questions I get asked uh, over and over again. Um, and answer some new ones. I asked the patrons in the Patreon group if I had some questions. Uh, this will just be a short one today to see how it goes and I'll gauge your reaction to it. And if you want to ask any more questions, I'm happy to do one of these uh, maybe once a week or something uh, and answer your questions. The most common question I get asked is how long have you been brewing and why did you start brewing? I started brewing back, it must have been 1988. Um, I left school because I got a good job. I left school in year 12 um, and I got a good job as an orthotics technician, which was making leg irons uh, for crippled kids. Oh, you're not supposed to say that anymore, but I worked for the New South Wales Society for Crippled Children, uh, which started, uh, when I started was in Surrey Hills in Sydney, just near Central Station there. Um, it was about three or four weeks after that, after I started there and I got a paycheck I bought a home brew kit. Um, I've got a photo here. This is when the New South Wales Society for Crippled Children moved to Parramatta. So this is probably a year later. Um, and we changed our name to Northcote, I think it's called now, Northcote. And here's me being very unhappy about having to be a display model. Um, what we were doing here was, it's not important, but we were vacuum forming a seat for how we do it for the disabled kids. Um, it was like a bean bag, and, you, and I had to sit on it for the d demonstration, and they sucked the air out of it. Then we make a mould, and we used to make you know special moulded wheelchairs and that for kids. And while I was doing that, I was training once a day um, at Tech to become a fitter machinist because we used to use all lathes and things to build uh, leg irons and stuff for the kids. So that became really handy in brewing. Anyway, it was one of my first, third, fourth, fifth, whatever it was, paychecks. I bought my first home brew kit. Uh, it wasn't a Cooper's. I don't remember the make of it. I do have a booklet here somewhere that came out of that first kit. If I can find it, I'll throw it up on the screen. But really, I started brewing for the want of beer. It wasn't, there was no craft beer scene. The term craft beer, I don't think, had even been invented. Um, it was 1988 or something. Uh, it was just for beer. I was young. In Australia, for those people watching overseas, we can start drinking at 18, which usually, legally at 18, which usually means we start at 16 or 17. <laughs> it's just the way it is. And uh, that is why I started brewing. So it's been over 30 years. Uh, about, I'd probably say the first 15 were all extract. There wasn't really, it was really hard to find a home brew shop um, on the central coast where I grew up. And then I moved to Melbourne and it got a bit easier. But even then, the ingredients weren't real good at the start. But uh, it was about 15 years ago when things really started picking up and you could get good yeast and good ingredients, and I moved on to doing all grains. And I was actually introduced to home brewing by my grandfather way before I was old enough to drink. Uh, he used to home brew, ginger beer, lemonade, beer. Um, and there's a photo here of me very young. It would be mid-70s, maybe late, late mid-70s. And he had brewed a batch of lemonade for the kids and he'd accidentally, well, he said accidentally, made, made it alcoholic. So we were out in the backyard drinking uh, alcoholic lemonade, and the adults didn't realise till we came inside and we were running around crazy and doing drunk things. So that was one of my introductions into home brew. Question two, this is a newer question. Why have you started putting music in your videos? There's two reasons for that. One is because uh, with brewing videos, I thought just thought they were getting a bit old doing the sort of same thing, even though they were different beers. Um, and I believe I need to still show the whole process for beginners because a lot of people come in, 
and they just watch one video and they might not subscribe or they might not have time to go and find my back catalogue. Um, and I think it's important, even though I try to make them a bit shorter sometimes, sometimes a bit longer if something goes wrong, um, to show the whole process. And instead of me just saying, uh, mash in again, stir again, I just thought I'd put some music over the top. But the second, probably bigger reason is that sometimes I like to play music or listen to the radio when I'm brewing. And especially now during lockdown, the kids are home and the wife's home. Uh, if I have to, you know, if I have to video a lot of the brew day, even though you might only see a little bit, I, I actually video a fair bit of it. And if I have to tell everyone to be quiet or don't come and talk to me or turn the radio down every time I want to, or music down every time I want to film a section, um, it just adds so much more time to the brew day um, time. And, you know, it's just a, a little bit of a pain in the butt to go over and turn the radio down. So... It's made it easier for me too. I won't be doing that in every video, but the odd video where I find it's just quiet and there's nothing there, I'm going to throw some music on. Some people have been loving it, some people haven't been, and you can't keep everyone happy. Question three, we'll move on to a bit more of a technical question, which is one that gets asked a lot. You can have a look in the comments below my videos. Is why don't you use the bottom or second screen in the malt pipe of the Robo Brew or Brewzilla anymore? Well, the first time I ever used it, as you can, as can be seen in the Brew Day from Hell video, um, I got it was the first time I'd used it. And I didn't take much care. I just sort of dropped the screen in, and when I was mixing and things, I must have got grain in between the two screens. And when you get grain sandwiched between two screens, of course, there's no flow. It backed up, and it became a real problem for that Brew Day. Um, the beer still turned out perfect. It was a really good brew, but it was a pain and a pain of a Brew Day. Now. It wasn't long after that. I used it a couple more times, and I just wasn't liking it. It was really slowing the sparge. I wasn't getting much flow. And I did actually contact uh, Kegland. Was it? Yeah, it was Kegland at the time. And they got me to do some tests. And I can show you here three different size screens. I think that's the original screen. I'm not even sure if they're still sold with it. They might be. That's the original screen. And there was these two bigger screens. I think from memory one was a six and eight or ten, maybe eight, six and an eight. So as mesh. Anyway, I did a whole bunch of tests using a single one of these different size screens, uh, doubling them up, tripling them up, turning them, you know, 45 degrees to each other, uh, wiring, wiring them down to each other so they were flat and grain couldn't get underneath them. You know, a big one, a little one. All sorts. I probably did eight different batches with the same malt bill just to try and test it and I was measuring the flow. Some of the videos I've done in the past you might have seen me measuring the flow. Which all I did then was I'd get it so the, the, the liquid was going through the grain bed nice at a speed, the sort of fastest I could get it going without it backing up. And then I'd take a litre jug and put it under the, uh, the recirc arm and measure how much came through in 30 seconds and then I compared them all together. I just found that I got just as good a flow without using any of these, sometimes better flow. Uh, so these days and for probably the last 12 months or more I, I haven't used any. I probably used that bottom screen three times by itself at first and then I did all those experiments and after those experiments I've just decided not to use any. I don't have any problems. Um, I'm not saying you shouldn't or you should, but that's why in my videos you don't see me using the other, the extra screen uh, in the malt pipe. If you wonder why I didn't upload those videos, it was just that it was the same base ingredients as that Brew Day from Hell video. Every batch that I did, that I can't remember what it was, eight batches or something, that I did was the same exact grain base as that Brew Day from Hell video because I wanted to keep it even. Um, I did mix up the hops sometimes, and one batch for a mate, I threw in some dark malt to make it a darker beer. It was 100 grams of, I don't remember, chocolate malt or something like that, or roast malt, just to make it a bit darker. But I just thought it was the same batches, and I was more focused on the job, at the, the task at hand, you know, get, making sure I measured the flow right and how everything was going Um I didn't have time to move the cameras around and, and video the brew days. But uh, anyway, that's why I don't use any. And one more question. Question four. Do I use Quike yeast still? Uh, do I recommend it? Or Kevik, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, I do like it. I have found uh, I don't 
really like it in IPAs. Um, and IPAs, maybe. They're a different beast. But I find, um, and it's sort of a mate, I was Ryan again, <laughs> said one day that um, he found the dry hops in his uh, quite beers, the, brought the bitterness out, they got too bitter. And I haven't done too many studies, but I just haven't liked the IPAs I've done with it. And it is something to do with the bitterness. Um, but I have liked pale ales and my sort of mid-strength NIPAs or any XPAs as I call them. That's my style. I invented it. <laughs> any XPAs. Um, I've enjoyed them immensely. Uh, and that's about all I've done. I haven't tried it in stouts like other people have and things like that yet. Mine have all been pale ales, any XBAs, NIPAs, and IPAs. Um, I'm not going to use them in IPAs anymore, but I will use them in pale ales and any XBAs um, and things like that. I will give it a go uh, once I get a bit of backup with beer. I'm running out at the moment because I've just missed out on another brew day because of this rain, but uh, I will play with it a bit more in the future. I've probably used it eight times so i'm you know i'm no real expert but uh you know i know what i like and i know what i don't like so yes i will still use it um i won't be using it in ipas anymore look i haven't got the time to experiment much um and find the right combination for ipas i don't think i need to when i know i can just throw nottingham or uso5 or something at it and make a great beer without having to make 10 batches of wasteful, you know, well, I'd still drink it, but not very nice beer made from quack when I know I can make a good beer with it this way and make my IPAs just using another yeast. Anyway, I think that will do for today. So if you have any questions, they can be personal. I won't answer yeah, to a certain extent um, questions about me or where I live or my life or whatever. That is fine. Brewing questions. Uh, if, they, if I find there's... People have asked about yeast. I've got a whole yeast series coming up. Um, it's taken me a little bit of time because a lot of it's filmed in the house and with my family home for lockdown and that. That's become very hard. But I have a whole series of yeast videos coming out soon. But, you know, just whatever. Nice short questions are good. <laughs> but it's up to you. If you want to know anything, as I said, personal, brewing, why I do things. It's probably better why I do things or why I don't do things Um and then, you know, I think that'll make some interesting videos. Anyway, cheers. Thank you. Like, subscribe. Uh, thank you to my patrons. If you wonder why I keep looking up, the camera's up there and the screen's here. I can't see what I'm doing. Thank you very much. Stay safe. Peace. One thing I am thinking about is doing another one of these. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you want another version, a revamp of my black metal IPA. <laughs>